What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Brian Daddy coming at you with another video. Today we're going to do a little overview of the Dawnbreaker dungeon. So it's, it's a small dungeon, it's a three boss dungeon, and it's located in Hollowfall. And the Arathi have just completed their flagship Dawnbreaker warship. And it's designed to have the firepower to turn the tide against the war against the Ashkahi. And this ceremonial ship launching is about to begin, and General Steelstrike has requested the appearance of the heroic outsiders to witness this historic launch. You need to locate the dungeon. It is located some about south of the zone. Pretty, no I would say, right around Nier's ascent is where you will find it. It involves around the entire city of Meraldar. It starts with the boarding of the Dawnbreaker and taking on Speaker Shadow Crown, and once she is defeated. You will fly to the city and face Anub Kaji. And lastly, players will return to the Dawnbreaker where they will face Rosh Hashan. So before taking on Speaker Shadow Crown, there are a few Nerubian airships that will try to web the ship in place and destroy it. At this point, players will receive Radiant Light, a debuff that allows players to sky ride during the dungeon instance. Simply flying to each opposing Nerubian airship will take out the enemies on board. And once all ships have been removed, she will appear back on the Dawnbreaker for you players to face. But before let's before we talk about her, let's talk about the trash leading up to her, which as you can see we are facing. There's going to be Cursed Blades. They're going to be threatening to the tank and you will want to watch out for the Dark Blade ability. You want to interrupt the Nightfall Shadow Mage's Ensnaring Shadows because it curses players. And use any leftover interrupts for Night Bolt casts. Use defensive cooldowns if you're targeted by the Ritualist's Tormenting Ray ability, because it's uninterruptible. And your tank must pay attention to the Nightfall Commander's Tainted Slash. It deals a high front amount of damage and leaves a bleed effect. And once you defeat everyone, you will have to head back to the main ship, and you will make sure you have to place the bomb, and you will then get to go against Speaker Shadow Crown's abilities. You will want to interrupt as many shadow bolts as you can. You also will want to make sure you dodge the incoming obsidian beam. Otherwise, you will likely die on impact. Also, use defensive cooldowns if you do get the shadow shroud absorb effect. After the removal of it, move quickly to avoid further damage from the follow-up ground visual of Collapsing Knight. And then twice during the fight, when she hits 50% and 5%, she will cast Darkness Comes, which is a major AoE ability. And during that time, you can Dragon Ride. You will want to fly away from the ship, pick up a nearby Radiant Light, which will be a little yellow orb. And then you will be able to avoid the explosion with that orb and fly back into the ship. Tank, you will want to move away the boss from any nearby collapsing night ground puddles, as it will make it hard for your party, your party to effectively dodge the beam. Healer, when the boss casts the burning shadows, it will apply an absorb shield on several members, and it will trigger the follow-up effect, so you want to make sure you have them players quickly topped up. Alright, now when you're heading to a noob Ikaj, and the trash mobs. There is a lot of mini bosses before you face the main boss. There are three of them. They're located in the whole city underneath. You have Ascendant Viscoria, Death Screamer Eichentak, and Ixkrin the Unbreakable. And each of them has unique abilities that will prepare you basically for the boss encounter. And basically what here's what you should know. When you're entering the area, there will be Night fa Fall Shadow Walkers. And they'll be the easiest mob in the area. It really only attacks your tank with Umbral Rush, and otherwise they will be pretty harmless. Uh, the side stepped from the shadowy ground vid visuals from the manifested shadows. In addition, you will want to use your defensive if you get the Abyssal Blast Dot, as it does hit pretty hard. Also, you want to interrupt the Nightfall Dark Casters Tormenting Beam again. And use CC to stop the Umbral Burial cast at all costs, because it does do a lot of damage. And it puts an Absorb Shield. 
Avoid being hit by Nightfell's Tactician Frontal Ability. And beware of the Sirake Militant as they are one of the most dangerous non-boss enemies in this area due to having the Entwining Threads and the Tacky Nova combination. So interrupt their Silken Shell cast at all times. It's also an highly important that you do defeat all of these mini-bosses because they apply an Empowered Might buff that they give to the main Anub Ikaj. They give him an increased damage of 30% and health by 50%. Ixtrin the Unbreakable will apply a Bistol Blast to a random party member. You will want to use an addition, uh, a defensive and run away from its slam. Death Screamer Icontact will apply a Bistol Blast to a random party member. And if you get targeted by a Dark Orb, aim it away. It travels the furthest as you will take less damage. The closer the Dark Orb explodes when colliding with something, Will actually increase the damage you take so you do want to try and be mindful of how you line up those giant orbs and for the tank when a noob ikaj casts animate shadows make sure to collect any nearby abyssal blast droplets and stack them under the boss for a glare cleave here is the perfect place to use your crowd control effects to stop their congealed darkness casts Healer, use your major cooldowns during the shadowy decay as the whole team will take damage. Alright, moving on to Rashanan. The notable trash before you get to him, if you get targeted by the Dark Architect's Tormenting Eruption, use your defensives, as always, and interrupt as many Night Bolts as you can. And the boss guide for him is a two-phase boss fight. There's not many. And it offers you a unique challenge that involves testing your dragon riding abilities during phase two. You will have to use your dragon flying mount to collect the light fragments placed in the air to extend your radiant buff to avoid dying from the encroaching shadows. And once you arrive at the final platform, you must interrupt his acidic eruption cast before continuing to phase two. All rolls during phase one, it is most important to deal with to prioritize the Arathi bombs and pick up any active sparking Arathi bombs and use the special action button to throw the bomb. Each bomb chunks around 6% of the boss's health, pushing him closer to phase two once he is below 65%. Sidestep the expel webs frontal, and during both phases, a random member from your party will be targeted with rolling acid. Make sure to place the wave so that it doesn't hit any of your team members and follow the indications above your head. It will show you which way it is actually going. This way it will prevent further damage to your party from the corrosion and the only person who will get damaged is you via the acidic stupor. During phase two, the boss will randomly select two members of the party, usually the DPS, to cast Spinneret's Strands and it will deal direct damage upon finishing its cast and leave behind sticky webs, lingering damage the longer you stay within those webs. The goal here is to escape the webs and resume the fight, thus activating the follow-up effect of Spinneret's web snap. And for the tank during phase two, use your active mitigation for each tacky burst. This is the tank buster ability. And for the healer during both phases, use your cooldowns when erosive spray is activated as it will deal wide damage and leave three undispellable stacks of lingering erosion on each team member. And during phase two, focus any team member that gets targeted by the Spinneret's Strands debuff. Alrighty. Here's a quick little guide of the Dawnbreaker dungeon. It's pretty fast and a pretty cool dungeon, very unique. I enjoyed it a lot. We had a nice dragon riding dungeon last expansion with the Onaran Plains one. And now we have this one. So. It is definitely, uh, I, I learned a lot because this is my first time running it, and I just wanted to share this info with you guys, so I appreciate you all tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Alrighty, y'all have a good one.